Welcome to the Drilling Millions Podcast, presented by Sage Dental Partners. Now let's jump over to another venture of yours, uh, which is MCI and One Health. Figured your hands are full enough. It seems like you've just added in another business um, into the program, but um, mm. how did you get started with that? Because that sounds super interesting as well. I was doing a bit of digging before we got on the call. Sure. Well, as I mentioned, uh, mentioned earlier, it's, we started our first dental office inside an MCI clinic. Um, so we knew the people, we knew the, we, we, we knew the business. I mean, we, we dealt with them for, for a, a number of years before we sort of separated and parted ways. Um, so when the business was put up for sale, um, we took an interest in it. Um, it was uh, a troubled business at the time. Things had changed. Uh, market conditions had changed. OHIP numbers came. Uh, you know, the government kept cut, cutting, cutting. Doctors were short, so salaries went up. So their margins were pretty tight. But they did have a base, and they had good people running that. So again, using our own history, we came in, we helped them prioritize what they needed to do, put in some uh, ag- excellent management and um, backed off. So, um, you know, we provided them with uh, insight as, as they needed, but the business was running and still runs as a separate unit with its own uh, teams and good people. Um, where One Health came up was, um, just prior to the pandemic, we started uh, looking at uh, opportunities associated with the data that is available in these clinics, um, and also the opportunity to digitize some of the, the patient interaction, doctor-patient interaction, and how we could be, um, you know, add value to the to the care of the patients, but also um, improve on the business. Um, side of the systems that, that, that were being provided. But we couldn't get anybody to do this. We, we had to, um, we were trying to introduce telehealth. And in, ni- in 2018 and 2019, we had about 50 visits that were actually conducted through telehealth. The doctors just wouldn't do it. Um, if they thought it was too cumbersome, it was taking too long, and it was much better to see the patient write your prescription and go. And then uh, the pandemic hit. Uh, and we didn't have enough trainers to train all the doctors that wanted to go on this uh, on the program. So we went from those fifty to uh, almost four hundred thousand in about a year. Uh, My goodness! And um, yeah, and then uh, the um, the uh, data opportunity uh, also began more and more um, uh, obvious and available to us. Um, we uh, bought a company called Cure Health that. Um, actually sifts through uh, patient charts and identifies patients with um, rare diseases. And there's something like a thousand of these rare diseases. Um, and they're very difficult for every doctor to know all of these rare diseases. So patients can go on diagnosed for many, many years. With this system, um, it identifies patients that may have the problem and goes to the doctor and say, doctor, According to this stat, this, do- this patient may have this particular rare disease. We suggest that you run these tests. When the tests come back, if they come back positive, then this is the course of, uh, of uh, action that is prescribed. Um, and um, it's actually um, really satisfying to see some of these patients that have, have, been, have been suffering for years at a time. And then when they're properly diagnosed and proper treatment is given to them, you know, they, they live uh, you know, comfortable lives. Um, so the digital side and, and, and the pandemic and all of this stuff started that uh, started to, to, to take what it was a bricks and mortar, patient by patient, low margin business to what we're getting MCI and One Health to look like now, which is a more uh, data-driven uh, digital um, company. The other thing that also comes is, is just, we were just talking about this a, a couple of days ago, is um, we've got um, uh, a program that um, will we'll, we'll do uh, studies on patients and the various treatments. Well, in the past, you would have to have somebody go through file by file by file by file to identify patients that could be good for these trials. Well, now with this computer system, we're identifying them thousands at a time. 
So it's, uh, it makes the, uh, the tests easier to conduct. Um, and with a number of patients, it makes them more valid or easier to, to prove. It's incredible yeah. how these transitions happen. I, uh, before, yes. before dental school, like I said, I was a management consultant and I was actually a technology management consultant. And, you know, everyone yeah, was sure. so hands off before, you know, we can't do it this way. And then as soon as COVID hit and I was working, yeah. everyone wanted to do it. And it's, and it was hilarious. You would always say necessity is the mother of invention, right? Yeah, yeah. So these aspirations of, of bringing everything online that had 10 year timelines and, you know, had all these regulatory processes involved, you know, over a course of a couple of months, they somehow it, got it, it was, done. it was, it was, I, you, you know what it was, I, I mean, part of that was also, I think our, our, as, as much as they inhibited, uh, the government inhibited us from doing our, our job early on because the, the, the lack of PPEs, um, the fact that they did change their uh, codes and allow doctors to bill uh, made a big difference. Um, yeah. So we got to tip my hat off to them for 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 being very quick with that. Um, so it was it was certainly helpful. How is it transitioning from wearing your Ultima dentist hat to you know being on this more technology AI driven business that you know is more of a medical business than it is a dental business? I have to have good people around me. <laughs> HR is the key. People that, people that actually, that's right. People that actually know all those, uh, all those, uh, all those multifaceted, um, uh, what you call it, tunnels that, uh, or si silos that are working within the, uh, the company. Right. So it seems to be your key for everything. It's just having really good people around you. Absolutely. How do you vet the people around you? How do you know the people around you are good? You know what? We use other people to help us find good people. Uh, we've got a, <laughs> the the um, uh, yeah. That's, you know, we we have we have certain uh, certain groups that that uh, we we go to and and we give them criteria of what we're looking for. They'll vet through. Um, you know, they'll go through a number of patients. Then they'll the patients people, and then they'll typically provide us with two or three that we can interview, and then uh, we'll. We take it from there but in, in a lot of cases the people that they bring us are are, are all excellent and can all do a, a great job um we've also had a lot of help with a private equity group um that um helped us bring in the the, the existing people that we have right now at ultima excellent 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 people um amazing skills um and um again it was they were sort of vetted through uh, uh, agencies and then through the private equity group and then came to us. So people to find people to find people. <laughs> I love it. So just generally looking back at all the ventures you've, uh, you know, embarked on, would you say you are generally a, a risk adverse or risk tolerant individual? Depends. <laughs> it depends. I, I think at this day, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm 64 right now. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to be a lot, a lot more cautious. I mean, the fact that we decided to go up and open up uh, dental offices with young families in the middle of uh, our recession when everybody's telling us that you can't do it, eh, different times back then, right? Right. So so, so what, what do you think made you more, I guess, in, in some aspects, risk tolerant than, than other people? Was it that you fear failure a little less? Like what, what's, what's your kind of outlook on that? I don't, um, I, I don't know um, what would, at the time I wasn't thinking, I, I didn't think that I was, I was, I was being risky. I thought it was a, it was a, it was a good plan and I had time to do it and I had the resources to put into it, to do it. Uh, and uh, we were fortunate enough that it turned positive. Uh, again, the bumps were able to correct them. They weren't as bad to, you know, to kill us. But mm -hmm. um, they were just they were just bad, so we could learn not to do it again next time. And from all the people that you've had surrounding you, and all the people of people that you've had surrounding them, what has been the, the best piece of advice you've received along the way, particularly in in, in Ultima? And, and and investing good people can't be the answer. <laughs> that, that, that's, I'm sorry, but that's where I was going to go. Um, <laughs> that was where I was going to go. It's valid. It's valid. Uh, you know sure. what? It's 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 the the, the the other one is not to not to put all your eggs in basket obviously uh and because because things don't always go exactly as planned you need to be able to have a strong enough base um of where your 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 revenue and your income and and your and your people are coming from in order to support 
things that don't go well. Right. So not 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 everything in one basket. Not all your eggs in one basket. And kind of taking a step back and looking at you know your career as a whole and, and how it all laid out. What advice would you give to your to yourself back when you're doing your DDS in my position? What advice mm-hmm. would you give to yourself back then? Slow down. Take it easy. Um, uh, learn more dentistry, learn more, sharpen your skills earlier. It took me a while um, to, uh, to go back and, and really focus on, on developing the, the clinical skills. Um, uh, and, and, you know, uh, find more people that um, have those, 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 those special skills and see if you can spend more time with them. I, 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 I did. I just wish I would have uh, spent a little more time uh, earlier on, mostly. Right, for sure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate the time. Mm-hmm. Happy that there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> You're a beacon <laughs> of hope for a lot of people, I think, in dentistry. So thank yeah. you for being that. Thank you for, thank you for asking me to be on. It was a pleasure.